Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the Friday edition here at Bible Track Echoes. I'm excited today. I'm excited for the weekend. This coming weekend, I get to preach in my home church. My pastor is in the continent of Africa. He's teaching at a theological school. He's teaching the doctrine of uh, dispensationalism, and he's left me his pulpit to stand in all day on Sunday. I am excited. I always get excited to have that opportunity in my home church. I hope you are excited about this weekend and you being in your place in your local. Bible preaching church as well. You need one of those. We all do. It's what God established. He established the local church. It's a place for us to grow and learn and be encouraging one another in our walk with the Lord and telling others about the gospel. And in that light, I've got a gospel tract in my hand I want to talk to you about. A gospel tract is simply an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. I want to talk to you about this one, and I want to be encouraging you to get from us a free sample pack out of our tracks. But right now, let me lead into our study time this way. Over the years, I've met some folk who taught religious classes. Most of these people were Sunday school teachers, but they were teaching error. In most of the cases, these teachers didn't know they were teaching error. They simply were teaching what their teacher's manual told them to say. But Every once in a while, I'll meet a religious teacher who does know what the Bible says, and they do know that they are teaching something that is contrary to the Word of God. Now, my attitude towards these two kinds of teachers is very different. In the case of the first group, I usually open my Bible and begin to show them key truths here and there in the Scriptures. You should see their eyes widen. They've never been shown truth before. They're excited. But that second group is really different. Most of the second group has grown up in a Bible-preaching church, but they left it, and now they basically mock me when I say that I believe that the Bible is God's inerrant and infallible word. These folk are not open to being taught. Now, it's this second group of teachers that this chapter here in uh, 2 Peter is all about. If you can, get your Bible. Join me in 2 Peter chapter 2. Let's find out what in the world these false teachers are doing anyway. I mentioned those gospel tracks here a moment ago. The particular track in my hand right now was one entitled, Seriously Speaking. Seriously Speaking, and the rest of the title goes like this, You May Be Sincerely Wrong. Oh, friend, we need to speak seriously when it comes to Bible truth, particularly on the truth of how to have eternal life, how to have the sin stain removed off your soul, why Christ is the only Savior. Those are critical truths, truths that make the difference between eternity in heaven or eternity in hell. But many people are sincere in what they think and believe. They're sincere in the religious practice, but they believe their religiosity and their morality is going to get them into heaven, and nothing could be farther than the truth. If you and I could get to heaven by our religiosity and morality, then Jesus would not need to have died on the cross, have shed his blood, be buried, and rise again, because we would not need him to be our Savior. We could save ourselves, but you know you can't. I know I can't. We need to tell people that there is a Savior. His name is Jesus. And friend, that's what this gospel track does. It confronts people who are seriously speaking about their religiosity, but they're sincerely wrong and their hope for eternity. Friend, there's a lot of people like that in churches around. Perhaps you know some. They're your friends. They're your family. Here's a good gospel tool. 
seriously speaking. At the end of the program, my announcer will be giving you three ways by which you can contact us. Choose one of those ways. Jot it down. Give us your name and address. We'll send you free of charge. That sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks, including this one, seriously speaking. You can just go to our website, which is Bible Tracks Inc. Dot O-R-G. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible is open to 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 begins this way, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. I'm going now to verse 10. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. I'm going now to verse 14. Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. Now, it doesn't mean there that they've They've been cursing children. They are cursed children. Finally, verse 18 says this, For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. I want to stop reading right there. There's an old joke about a man who was five foot seven inches tall, and he weighs over 300 pounds, and he was hired to go door to door selling diet books. Now, obviously, it's a joke. That man's physical qualities would have turned folk away from buying the book. We've spent this week here in chapter 2 looking at the qualities of apostate teachers, those false teachers. These are those who fit into group number two that I talked about in my opening. Their life qualities ought to push people away from listening to their religious ideas because they live greedy, immoral lives. Today, though, let's look at what 2 Peter 2 says, not about their life qualities so much, but let's look at what it says about what they actually do. What do these kinds of teachers do? practice. I'm going to use four words today. The first three begin with the letter I, like in the word intelligent. The fourth word begins with the letter E. Are you ready? Jot it down. Word number one is instruct. Instruct. I read there in verse one that these are false teachers. They are teachers. These are people involved in teaching and preaching. We could use the word catechizing here. They teach other people, but they teach error. They're false teachers. Now, we've talked about that last week. We cannot and do not are going to take the time to spend there anymore. But word number one is instruct. Word number two is the word insight. Insight, based upon verse 10. Verse 10, you're going to find these two phrases. Number one, it says, they despise government. And the verse also says, they speak evil of dignities. A hallmark of apostate teachers is that they denounce the need to listen to those in authority. That could be religious authority, to be sure, but other authorities as well. They teach that those in authority are wrong and are holding you down by what they're saying to you. Now, please, please note that we all know that uh, people in positions of authority can be wicked people, have been wicked people. Just go back and read about some of the kings in the Old Testament. But God's word does teach order, order in our homes, order in our society, and order in our local churches. And by the way, one of the results of teaching God's word in any place around the world as it has impact on the society is that there is a respect for those in authority. It's promoted. It's not torn down. Word number one is instruct. Word number two, incite. Word number three is the word indulge, based upon verse 14. Verse 14 says that having eyes full of adultery and they cannot cease from sin. Now, listener friend, false teachers live ungodly, unrestrained lives. About They are involved in ministry in an immoral attitude and for money. 
And God's word talks about keeping our body and its sinful passions down and under control. These teachers live and teach the opposite. So instead of holding Bible studies in homes or other places that are wholesome, they hold Bible studies in microbrewery restaurants. Instead of holding a narrow line on marriage and sexual activity, they say it's okay to live out what you want in your lust. Go ahead. Now, old historic standards of godly living are thrown off by these teachers, and now these teachers virtually say anything goes. But that brings me to my fourth word, and that fourth word is the word entice, based upon verse 14 and verse 18. In verse 14, it uses the word beguile, and in verse 18, you're going to see the word allure. Both these English words translate the same Greek word, and they are really, really good translations of that Greek word. These teachers not only practice and indulge in sin, these teachers dangle a sinful lifestyle before people who are seeking to learn learn about God. These teachers say, you can know God, you can have peace with God, you can be a very spiritual, amateur follower of God and still practice a sinful lifestyle. They teach that you don't have to give up sin to have Jesus as Savior. Beloved, if that's true, then why did John the Baptist, why did Jesus, why did the apostles Peter and Paul and the Apostle John all teach repentance from sin. The reason we need Jesus as our Savior is because we are sinners at our core of our being. Just like an apple tree is a, produces apple because at the core of it, it's an apple tree. You and I produce sin because at our core, we are sinners. So we produce the fruit of our sinful core. Now, friend, listen to me. Let me play the role of a Dutch uncle right now in your life. If you call yourself a born-again person, but you sense no need to surrender sinful fleshly practices and ideas, then I charge you to seriously question your salvation. Of course, I cannot see your heart. You can't see mine. I cannot judge your heart but I sure see your life and its unchangedness after you have claimed to receive Christ as your Savior. If that is, if been no change in your life, and no change in my life after you and I claim to be Christians, then we ought to question whether we have received new life from Jesus at all. What does a new life mean but a new life? If you're not living a new life, then probably you didn't get new life. Friend, don't play games with the eternal destiny. Jesus came to die on the cross to deal with sin. Your sin will keep you out of heaven. Christ died to forgive your sin and to free you from its dominance in your life. Receive Christ as Savior. Make him your Savior and your Lord today. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.